September 4th, 1977. It's 2.40 a.m. in the heart of San Francisco's Chinatown. The streets are packed with late night revelers, shift workers, and students all out for a good time. In the busy Golden Dragon restaurant, Raymond Shrimp Boy Chow enjoys a late night snack. He's a 17 year old gangbanger, just arrived from Hong Kong. He's already worked his way into Chinatown's street gang network. I was a pretty bad kid, you know, back in Hong Kong. Involved a lot of uh, illegal activity. We contact with drug, prostitution, gambling. As Raymond and his friends feast on Chinese food, three gunmen burst into the restaurant. First thing we just heard a gunshot. Everybody duck, you know. And only the people, like the innocent people, they sit there. They don't have that kind of reaction. Chinatown beat officer Nelson Lum is on the scene in less than two minutes. I was the first one that went into the restaurant itself, and uh, it, it, was filled, it was still filled with uh, smoke from the gunfire. And there were just people screaming, people on the ground, blood everywhere. In a matter of seconds, five innocent bystanders are killed and 11 wounded. San Francisco's Asian underworld is placed under the spotlight for the first time. Some who were in the Golden Dragon likened the carnage to a firefight in Vietnam. The dead and dying lay on the floor as the ambulance crews and police officers and even those who weren't injured tried to care for those who had been shot. It's the worst massacre in San Francisco's history. It's terrible. It's terrible. Just go in and look at the blood and I just can't believe it. My initial thought was it was a robbery and somehow it turned into a massive shooting. But Lum realizes this is more than a robbery. I noticed in the middle of the restaurant, there was a group of young Asian males whom I recognize as you know, being part of the game. The shooting is an attack on Chinatown's largest gang, the Hua Ching. It's part of an ongoing battle for turf between Chinatown's many Asian street gangs. For Chow, the shooting is an introduction to gang warfare, American style. He doesn't wait to be questioned by the police. And a lot of people got hurt over there. A lot of people over there left the scene soon after the shootout. The Golden Dragon Massacre is a serious wake-up call for the San Francisco police. The city is in shock. Chinatown is renowned for vice and drugs. But up until now, the violence has been contained amongst Asians and treated with ambivalence by the cops. The Chinese community has always taken care of its own. So no matter what happens in Chinatown, it's taken care of. As the main port of entry for the West Coast, San Francisco's Chinatown is home to one of the biggest Chinese populations outside Asia. Waves of immigrants came for the gold rush of the 1850s and stayed to build the railroads. They created San Francisco's world-famous Chinatown, which sprawls across the hilly northern quarter of the city. But behind the brightly advertised storefronts, Chinatown's community is organized into secretive groups known as Tongs. Part political group, part community association. Tongs are a uniquely Chinese-American institution that emerged to support Chinese immigrants in the face of widespread racial discrimination. When the Chinese first settled in San Francisco, they were really isolated. And the Tong provided the community with a sense of belonging. It also allows them to have a sense of, of uh, identity. There are many tongs in San Francisco. The oldest plays host to a long established native Chinese organization called the Hung Moon, or Chinese Freemasons. Hung Moon refers to a network of secret societies, also known as triads, which have existed in mainland China 
for over 300 years. Hongwon is the overall umbrella for all um, uh, triads. All triad rituals originated from the Hongwon. Triads were renowned for crime and opium smuggling and were eventually outlawed in China and Hong Kong. San Francisco's branch of the Hung Moon operates as a legitimate community organization. But some Tong members with triad connections managed to smuggle opium into the U.S., creating a side of Chinatown rarely seen by newsreel cameras. Above all, many Tongs indulge Chinese workers' favorite vice, gambling. Their clubhouses host illegal games of mahjong and Chinese poker. Most of the Tongs are involved in illegal gambling, and um, out of illegal gambling, you have long shocking and then you have extortion. By the 1970s, the cops identify five major Tongs involved in illicit enterprises. To maintain control, these five Tongs divide Chinatown into territories and organize street gangs to protect their illegal activities. For a young wannabe like Raymond Chow, the Tong gangs are an opportunity to climb the criminal ladder. Chow hangs around Chinatown's playgrounds, where he meets other young immigrants with little money and nowhere to go. I met Raymond. He just came over from Hong Kong. It's not too many pool halls down in Chinatown, so we hang out in the Chinese playground. Smoke cigarette, play car, you know, shoot the moon, you know. That's about it. That's what it is. And then we just all hang out there. At just five foot four inches tall, Chow is nicknamed Shrimp Boy. He brings experience of triads from his home city of Hong Kong. Triad and back then is a part of the environment in the Hong Kong. I we explode in the very, very early age. And first time I age or blood, that was when I was nine. <laughs> we feel so excited, you know, when we join. Unlike other Asian street gangs, triads are steeped in Chinese tradition. Initiates must perform ritual acts in which they become blood brothers, swear 36 oaths of loyalty and secrecy, and pass through a symbolic gateway to be reborn a triad gang member. Basically, if somebody betrays the triads or uh, any of his members, uh, they will be killed. As the Golden Dragon Massacre shows all too clearly, San Francisco is very different to the Hong Kong streets of Chow's childhood. His new friend, James Powell, teaches Chow how gangbanging works in the USA. He showed us the street fighting of the, of the knife. We show him the street fighting of the gun. I remember the first time that we got in trouble. He go in the kitchen and grab a, grab a knife. I said, you don't cut yourself with that. Here, try this. <laughs> and then he dropped a blade. And after that, he never pick up one again. It's not long before Shrimp Boy and Pao are recruited into the notorious Hop Sing Boys, a gang linked to Chinatown's Hop Sing Tong. An elder of the Hop Sing Boys, or Dai Lo, swears them in. Dai Lo is a big brother. We follow our Dai Lo, and then the, somebody follow us. Dai Lo tell us what to do. We go along the line, chain of command, discipline. That's how our Chinese go. Chow's main reason for joining the Hop Sing Boys is the lure of easy money in San Francisco. Here, some tongs are known to control the illegal gambling dens, nestled in the basements and back rooms of buildings all over Chinatown. Back then, Chinatown is like a gold mine. Well, Chinese, you know, most of the time, you know, keep the cash in the house. Everything valuable, they don't, they don't really trust the bank. You see a lot of cash flow inside Chinatown. Gambling den, loan shacking, all this is cash flow. And this is what I get into. The Hop Sing boys collect loan sharking debts on behalf of some Tong elders and extort the gambling dens on their patch. When you want to open a gambling joint, you come and look for us before we come and look for you. The gang also protects the gambling revenue by fending off other gangs. The Hop Sing boys fight running street battles with their main rivals, the Wa Ching. 
I got a lot of big fight with uh, watching and uh, different gang. Pretty much I have a lot of shit out. Chinatown, every, every street I have shit out. The rivalry is not only about money. The Wa Ching is an American-style street gang and rejects the rituals and traditions of Chinese tongs and triads. The Wa Ching is a street gang. I'm saying we got rules to tie into us. So we don't do this, you don't, we don't do that, we don't do that. They're free. They could do whatever they want. Before the Golden Dragon incident, the police turned a blind eye to gambling-related offenses. They know who we are. We know who they are. Long as long we don't start something in front of them, they usually let us walk. But Chow is an ambitious criminal who puts this delicate balance to the test. February 1978, in San Francisco, Hop Sing boy Raymond Chow and his crew raid a local gambling den. They opened a new gambling den, but they wasn't notify us. When I got that information, and well, we're going to go up there, you know, check them. And we ran up there. They had about 30 people inside there, and we robbed them. In their eagerness to take cash and valuables, Chow and the Hopsing boys fail to realize that this is not a gambling den, but a private function. Chinatown has changed, and the cops encourage victims to come forward in an effort to keep the gangs under control. The ambushed partygoers go straight to the police. In the description of the robbery, suspects came out. I knew it right away it was Raymond. After just 18 months in the United States, Chow is arrested and convicted of armed robbery. He is sentenced to 11 years in state prison. While Chow is in jail, the balance of power in Chinatown's underworld shifts. The criminally influenced Tongs lose control of the vice trade, and the Hua Ching gang gains a new stranglehold on Chinatown. Chow's old crew, the Hopsing boys, all but disappear. When I come out of prison, all the Hopsing members, they defeated by Hua Ching. A lot of members, they, they turned to legitimate. January 1985. Despite the lack of support, Raymond Chow is determined to return to a life of crime. By using the criminal contacts he's gained in prison, Within a year, Chow is knee-deep in drugs, prostitution, and fencing stolen goods. I'm the biggest buyer underneath the scene. Rob the jewelry store or whatever, I buy it all. But Chow is encroaching on rival Hua Ching territory. Their leader, a powerful Asian gangster named Danny Wong. Danny Wong, at that time, he was... Um, Watching the leader, very intelligent, sharp, very well study the art of war. Wong wants to bring Chow and his growing crime empire under the watching umbrella. I'm running a biggest escort service here, and watching Chai to have people come and talk to me, to brand it with them, and have me like under them and. I do not see I can learn anything from them. Rebuffed by Chow, 